Hello Astrobo subscribers and welcome back to another video, the second to last video actually in the Nakshatra series. Um, if you're new to this channel or this series, uh, this is a channel talking about astrology. What astrology is, is um, a system of correspondences between planetary and astronomical and temporal cycles and um, basically sociology, like what people are doing and what society in general is doing. So, um, you know, those are the initial axioms of it. You can take it or leave it. Um, we're talking about a lesser known uh, variety of um, astrological category today called a nakshatra, and that's been this series that I've been doing, trying to spread awareness about this. For people who are interested in astrology, a lot of them are only interested in sun signs. And that's a problem because Obviously, there's more than 12 types of people in the world. So if you're going to start an astrological model, just doing sun signs is not good enough, obviously, um, because then there would only be 12 types of people. Uh, there aren't even 12 types of sun signs. But because the sign matters, um, the house matters that the sign is in, aspects matter, which is where that planet is related to other planets in the sky when you were born, Transits matter, which is where the planets are now um, versus where they are when you were born. And nakshatras matter. And nakshatras are the thing that gets talked about least in astrology. And that's an issue because they're extremely important and useful. So basically, most people who are interested in astrology will be familiar with the concept of a co-ruler. For instance, uh, most people who study this for a certain amount of time will know that uh, Scorpio, uh, Aquarius, and Pisces have co-rulers. Uh, so for instance, the co-rulers of Aquarius are Saturn, Uranus, and the North Node of the Moon, or the Ascending Node. Um, those all have different uh, implications to that sign. The co-rulers of the sign of Pisces are Jupiter and Neptune, and the co-rulers of Pluto or of Scorpio are Mars, Pluto, and the south node of the moon. Um, with this being said, you can divide up the sky into 12 sections of 30 degrees each, which is how you get the, the zodiac months, uh, starting with the spring equinox and repeating again on uh, March 20th. You can also... Um, divide the sky into the ecliptic into 27 portions of 13 and one third degrees each. And why that number is relevant is if the sun's path can be neatly divided into 12 uh, sections that we call the zodiac signs, um, the moon's path can be divided into um, 13 Oh no, sorry, 27 sections of 13 and one third degrees each, totaling 360. So each of these lunar uh, sections have their own canonical co ruler. There are uh, nine of them, and uh, nine, co nine different co rulers that uh, the moon or the a sign can have, or a planet can have based on its position in the um, nakshatra system. So for instance, if a planet is in Aries at 9 degrees, let's say, um, it's going to have the co-ruler of the south node because that the south node rules that part of Aries, as well as the natural ruler of Aries, which is Mars. Okay, so with that being said, today we're talking about Uttara Bhadrapada Nakshatra. So that's the Vedic or Sanskrit name um, Uttara Bhadrapada is in the sign of Pisces, uh, which is the last zodiac sign, the twelfth one. Obviously, there's no last one because it's a cycle that keeps repeating forever, but um, typically Aries is considered the first zodiac sign, whereas Pisces is considered the last, one to twelve, right? So it has that element of finality to it. This is from three and one third degrees Pisces to um, 16 and two-thirds degrees Pisces. And uh, this nakshatra is uh, co-ruled by Saturn, as well as the natural uh, rulers of Pisces, which are uh, Jupiter and Neptune. 
Now, a brief overview of the sign of Pisces. If you want a better understanding, go to my Sun in Pisces video and my Pisces Ascendant video that are already up here on this channel. Um, the sign of Pisces, in short, is uh, when you look at Jupiter, right? Jupiter is religion, belief systems, it's uh, cultural um, values, it's uh, the positive aspect of the law, the non-restrictive aspect of the law, um, and you know, in the past that was religion, and in the present day it's, you have the separation of church and state, but that doesn't really matter because the law is still transcendent, it's an ideal, it's uh, revered, all this stuff. So um, Jupiter is basically, you can think of it as the positive aspect of society at large. This is why it's a social planet. Its opposite is uh, Saturn, which could be viewed as the negative aspect of society, which is also where we get the root word uh, for Satan, and the Egyptian god Seth is the prerequisite to that. So, this being said, um, you've got that as the main ruler. And then you have, in the side of Pisces, you have Neptune. Now, Neptune is a planet that represents um, essentially... I would call it the negative side of freedom, although that can be a little bit confusing. So if you imagine that Neptune and Uranus are on a sort of, uh, they're opposite poles of, you could call it creativity or freedom or editing a system, right? So what Uranus does is it takes the system and it tries to adapt to the system in a way that is advantageous to itself. Um, basically, it's a planet of material gains, science, leverage, technology, uh, using tools, because, I mean, obviously you're going to use a tool, whether that tool is a physics theorem or a, uh, a pickaxe, whatever it is, uh, you're going to try to use this tool, this technology, to um, change and better the system that you're in. So, you can think of Neptune as kind of almost the opposite of that. It's not only the forces that try to disrupt the system, meaning like natural entropy uh, and um, like chronic drug use addiction, um, it's also imagination. So, there's an interesting uh, juxtaposition there in that Neptune is not just the destructive element of nature, but it's also the uh, place that new ideas come from. So for instance, you have people like Einstein who have like four Pisces placements saying imagination is more important than knowledge, right? Um, that is a good example because people like that are incredibly disruptive, but they're also highly imaginative. It's just that almost everything Neptune does essentially fails. So that's part of the issue with it, right? Is that it's all of the new ideas, and most of the new ideas are stupid and wrong, but some of them are wildly useful. Um, so basically that's, that's Neptune. Uh, it's a mix of natural entropy and creative potential and imagination. Um, hallucinations are considered uh, Neptune to some degree. They're also North Node, but I'll get into that later. Um, so, you could also think of the word uh, deluge, right, which means flood. Obviously, Neptune is the god of the sea. Deluge is the root word for delusion. So that can also be a helpful reminder to understand Neptune. So, this being said, uh, you put the, um, what's it called? The teaching aspect of Jupiter and you pair that with the imagination qualities of Neptune, and what you get is um, a person who is either incredibly talented and amotivated, or dep this depends on the placement, the aspects, all the other stuff I talked about, or a person who is um, sort of checked out from reality, but is incredibly, uh, imaginative, basically 
a person who lives in a constant state of daydream, but whose ultimate responsibility is to take that daydream and communicate it to people. So they're the sort of the conduits between uh, potential information that could exist and be useful and everyone else. So these are your artists, these are your um, spiritual practitioners, I suppose. These are people who create new religions, um, who have new ideas. These are your theoretical physicists, your abstract mathematicians. Uh, that's basically the sign of, of Pisces, effectively. Your musicians, your guitarists, and, um, you know. It's also your uh, crazy homeless guy rambling on the side of the street about the government conspiracy to take away his feet. So there are many sides to this. Not all of them are positive, not all of them are negative. They're, like everything else, there's a good side and a bad side to everything. So, with this being said... Um, Uttara Vajrapada Nakshatra goes from, like I said, three and a third degrees Pisces to uh, 16 and two thirds degrees Pisces. So um, it's co ruled by Saturn, I believe I said that. And so these people are effectively spiritual authorities. So, like I said, Saturn is the strict aspect. You could look at it as a negative, it's not really a negative, it's necessary in the same way that people who take out the trash and the sewer systems are not positive, but they're necessary, you know. Um, death, Saturn rules death. That's why it's, uh, Saturn is always seen as the holding a scythe, right? You reap what you sow, it giveth and it taketh away. It's Father Time with his black cloak and his uh, razor-sharp sickle that he separates the wheat from the chaff, right? So basically, um, Saturn is judgment, it's discretion, it's material realities, like, we are going to die. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, gravity exists. There's nothing that you can do to fly without a plane. Um, basically, it's the limitations and the restrictions of the material world. It's also time, because obviously time is a big limitation. You live now and not 10 years from now. So, um, but Saturn is also necessary for reality to exist, because obviously if there was no time, then everything would just crunch into one and there would be nothing. Um, so basically, uh, Uttara Bhadrapada is a mix of Saturn and it's a mix of Pisces, which is a mix of, is Pisces a mix of Jupiter and Neptune. So what happens with this? These people become very disciplined about teaching spiritual pursuits. They spend a lot of time organizing their spiritual doctrine. These are the people who can create new belief systems over long spans of time. If you want good examples of this, I'm not saying these people have this planet, because like I said, or have things in this planet, or this sign, nakshatra, whatever, but they embody this energy. Because everybody has all the planets, signs, nakshatras, houses, everything in their chart. It's just a matter of where, it's a matter of specifics. Like where is the planet placed? Um, is it in the first house? Is it in the eighth house? etc. Um, this being said, people who embody this energy, uh, Terence McKenna, uh, Sadhguru, the uh, yogi, uh, the channel Spirit Science, basically these people organize large amounts of, Ooh. apologies, these people organize large amounts of spiritual and philosophical information in novel ways. They combine it they write it all down, they communicate it to people because Saturn is also mass communication, right, through the sign of Aquarius. Um, helpful knowledge about the material world, right? So these people basically take it upon themselves to organize large amounts of information about spiritual or theoretical truths um, or ideas, and they attempt to present it to people and they make it their life's work to be a teacher. Uh, Saturn operates in threes. So um, basically, a Saturn cycle is uh, 30 years. And obviously, that's very easily divisible by three. Um, so basically, these people spend uh, the first 30 years of their life learning. 
the second 30 years of their life uh, teaching and then the last 30 years of their life publishing um, uh, their ideas, whatever their ideas happen to be. It's usually, it has to be generally novel, interesting, and combining a lot of different belief systems and spiritual and their own insight. So basically, yeah, that's what these people do. This is Uttara, Bhadrapada, Nakshatra. Um, so yeah, if you have this Nakshatra present in your chart, if you have planets in it, if you know people who have a lot of these placements, uh, send this, uh, this video to them and, you know, maybe they'll like it. Maybe they'll gain some insight from it. Um, this is also one of those nakshatras where, where astrology, knowing astrology can really be helpful in determining the course of a person's life. So for instance, um, with this nakshatra, people can, uh, often be seen as crazy if they're not brought up in the right environment because they're systematically subverting the belief systems of their society and trying to make new things, new ideas, new concepts, new imagination constructs. So, um, you know, if somebody is doing that and they don't know why, they don't know the reason for doing that, then that can be really stressful for obvious reasons. So, uh, you know, definitely there there is a reason to send this video to somebody who might need it. So, yeah. That was Uttara Bhadrapada Nakshatra. Check in next time for Revati, which is the last nakshatra in this series. And then I'm going to be doing uh, probably planets through uh, signs and houses. So, like, I've already done sun, but I'm probably going to be doing moon, mercury, and all the other planets next. So, yeah, check that out. And don't forget to subscribe.